Hello, folks. Welcome back. I'll tell you what. what what's up, female mascaras? Doing hanging from the ceiling fan. You know, this is the last time I let Io del Hobo El Vagabundo as a numero uno do a prediction. I don't know. He like wrecks the house. Oh, wait. Hello, folks. I am the one. I am the only, I am the one they call Hobo Tom. And you know, I must represent my Macho Man shirt. Macho Man Randy Savage. So that means I have to be talking about some WWE. And I just watched SmackDown. So hopefully this video gets up sometime. Um, I'm going to a cookout tomorrow. So maybe, jeez. Oh, I'll have to leave the key under the mat. And let uh, El Vagabundo and I guess to do the show. I have no idea. I'll try and call and, and see what's going on. But yes, tomorrow's Impact Wrestling, or later today, depending whenever whenever I get this video up. But right now, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some SmackDown, and I have some people to thank. Yeah, wow. You're a new person to talk to. You don't have nine lives, but you always get that six count. Tyrone, you sir know what you're talking about because you are a master of the air guitar.
I'm a ladder match. What would it be without some insight from you? I forget what we were talking about. Although it probably had something to do with the riot squad. Or, or it might have been Ring of Honor. Something like that. But you, sir, don't crawl. Don't run. Just, or don't walk. Just scooch on out of here. So all my thank yous that have been been sent out right now. Let's see here. Eventually, I think it's like right there. I'm still trying to find the sweet spot for the microphone. It's like angles and stuff, and production. Even though the office really doesn't carry, the office it's not soundproof, but there's enough stuff. Like the carpet always works, the couch helps, and just like I don't know random things so it's not too bouncy but i'm still trying to figure out my new microphone trying to get the best output available the best configuration i don't even know how to do that let's see here oh no it's, it's like all or nothing though that's okay again it's probably meant for ooh, professional people not hobos like me, but that's okay. I do appreciate it. Such a good microphone. So much better. So glad to be hands-free. I can chillax. I can see the Macho Man shirt in all of its glory. Again, the Tower of Power. Too, too sweet to be sour. Um, ooh, yeah. Dig it! Yep. Too sweet to be... The Tower of Power, too sweet to be sour. Yeah, so I saw this shirt and I'm like, must get it. In fact, that reminds me, I should get my dad a glorious t-shirt. That's neither here nor there. I can get that later. But I'm here to talk about SmackDown. Um, we like recaps. We want recaps. That's kind of what the show felt like. It started off probably a good 15, 20 minutes. Uh, recapping the whole Roman Reigns. Uh, what happened last week. And then with Adam Pierce And the gauntlet. And stuff with the gauntlet match. Meh. So our first match we have Jey Uso coming in talking some trash. He calls out Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke was good enough. But yeah, we wanted you to lose so therefore you lost. Uh, starts off really just a brawl. Uh, Shinsuke, again, if you're going to get in a brawl, you don't necessarily want to get in a brawl with Shinsuke Nakamura. Definitely the king of strong style. Uh, he gets sent in hard to the corner, but again, Shinsuke he, Nakamura comes back so many kicks, so many knees. Again, the master of the master of strong style. Hey! Um, Shinsuke Nakamura... Although he did pull off the first wrestling move. He did the classic chin lock. It's always good to see the wrestling moves come back in a wrestling match. Just on a brawl. Uh, then they go to the outside, which is really good. He sends Jay Bonks off. He, he bonks Jay, Jay Uso's head off the table. Bonks him into the ring post. Uh, we cut to break. We come back. Oh, wait. Actually, before break, Cesaro shows up. Oh, wow. That was pretty cool. Um, he sat down in commentary. Yeah, yeah, my buddy Shinsuke Nakamura's there. And, wow, I was so shocked. The one negative thing Raw, uh, Raw and SmackDown will do when they have guest commentators is that they'll make it more about the guest commentator. And it's just like another promo time for Cesaro. Whereas with, e, with AEW, when... Chris Jericho is on commentary. It's not about really him. There's some of his background knowledge, 
but it's it's more of his color as to what's going on in the match. So it's different in that effect. It's not about it's not this is not the Chris Jericho show. Chris Jericho's not there cutting a promo, even, even though he might mention stuff that he did. Oh yeah, I remember wrestling that guy in, 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 in um when he would talk about Moxley. Yeah, I hate him. I wrestled him in New Japan. He tried he tried to beat me up. But that's salient to the point when John Moxley is in the match. It's like, yeah, I got hit with that spiked baseball bat. It sucked. So he's talking about himself, but he's relating it, and it's a more salient point as to what's going in the ring. WWE doesn't do that so well. Uh, Jay eventually gets back into control, uh, hits a sliding forearm onto Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, in the corner a little bit, Jay taunts a little too much. He gets sent into the rope. Shinsuke hits that sliding snap German suplex. That's still really cool looking. It's good to see. Uh, there's no Kinshasa instead. Shinsuke hits a super uh, J uh, no Kinshasa from Shinsuke Nakamura. Instead, Jay Uso hits a super kick. But however, Jay Uso took too much time getting to the top rope for the big splash. Shinsuke Nakamura got his knees up. He tried to go for the dirty pin. Little Nate said, "No, I see your feet on the rope." No pin. Doesn't count. And it's good. The referee, again, the referee does have the final say. It's not so much the three count. When the ref says the match is over, say one, two. Wait, no, 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 no. Your feet on that rope. You cheated. I like that. Little Nature's at least cuts it down right down the middle. Or as middle as an asymmetrical hand could get because of a thumb. So... Uh, then, uh, Shinsuke Nakamura, again, uh, because of this whole distraction, he's cool boys, so school boy take down on Jey Uso, Kinshasa's him, Shinsuke Nakamura picks up, picks up the win. This was actually really good. You know what? I, I'm, I was impressed by it. Now that looking, looking at my notes, I actually did do a lot. This was a surf and turf match. Remember, Shinsuke versus AJ Styles for that was actually a Filet Mignon match too. So that was a surf and turf. This was really this was it told us yeah, it told the story. Got Uso involved, Shinsuke Nakamura, so they're setting up Cesaro. And Shinsuke almost to be a face now, which is a good swerve. Because I think Shinsuke Nakamura could pull off of... He could do anything. He's Shinsuke Nakamura. He's just happy. He's just happy. He gets to be here in the States. He works once a week, maybe, twi maybe twice a week, depending on the pay-per-view. Or if there is something he has to do. And he gets to surf. Sounds like the life to me. I wish I could work once a day and then go fishing like four more days. That sounds like the life. Um, then we go backstage. Sonya Deville is talking to Adam Pierce. I guess Sonya is the executive assistant, I guess, to Adam Pierce. Paul Heyman comes in and says, Whoa, that's some strong perfume you got there, Sonya. <laughs> And wait, boo, Sonya Deville, boo, boo, Sonya Deville, boo, boo, Sonya Deville, boo, Sonya Deville's perfume, boo, too much, boo, I need, I need my boo, Sonya Deville moment, boo, yeah, <laughs> so that was funny though, uh, Jey Uso then is seen back, Backstage arguing with Little Nature. Hey, do your job. He's like, Little Nature's like, no, I'm not taking it from you. I am doing my job. Your feet on the rope. You're trying to cheat. No, no three count for you. No three count for you. Then uh, the Street Profits did a brief interview. That was okay. Then back in Roman Reigns' office, he's there chilling with Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews looks mighty comfy. But wait a second. Paul Cruz is not Samoan, though. Indeed. 
Then there was the whole Randy Orton and, and the fire and the fiend and, 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 and wanting to set and having flame tossed in his face by Alexa Bliss stuff. Uh, so this leads to the second match. So SmackDown's definitely following a, a somewhat predictable kind of two matches an hour with, with a lot of filler and, and commercials. Impact, at least, I don't know, they have as many commercials, I guess. So it's Liv Morgan versus Natalia. Liv, uh, Liv, uh, Natalia comes to town with, with Tamina. Liv Morgan is escorted to the ring by, by Ruby Riot, who's hot Ruby Riot. I like the fact that, show, she, that she is showing the top of her control top panty, her control top fishnet pantyhose. Good play, Ruby Riot. Um, Liv Morgan was wearing some kind of silvery thong thing because these straps or these side straps were like riding on her, 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 her very curvaceous hips. And yeah, and it was like the old thong song, thong, 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 thong. But yeah, that, that was happening. Uh, Billy Kay, <laughs> she came down as punk, she went punk rock. Um, uh, now known as Billy Vicious. Poor Billy Kay. She's even, she's even more behind her music than this guy is. And I'm a good seven years behind the trends of music. So, uh, well, enough about that. Uh, this match, Liv Morgan, again, <laughs> that shove by Natalia, uh, Liv, Liv, Goes off the ropes onto a hurricanrana. Liv, again, that's a, a test of strength with Natalia. Actually, I'm always amazed the wrestlers can pull this stuff off. Because that's not easy to get off, off your back. Flip onto someone else, be caught, and go into a monkey flip. Um, Natalia eventually uh, hang, hangs up Liv on the top rope. Uh, beats her a little bit. Um, Natty hits, hits the clothesline. Liv... Yep, Liv, you tried. Um, then what happened? Billy Kay acts as a distraction, and she goes over to Tamina, starts to talk trash to Tamina. Tamina just just bullies her. She goes back in the ring. Billy Billy vicious, absolutely terrified. Uh, she runs out of the ring, hits, trips up Liv a little bit. Probably should have been a little bit more on that. Again, just as a distraction. Um, Natalia then schoolboy uh, does the roll up distracted pin on Liv Walmart mom Kmart mom Natalia wins it was okay I want to see where they go with this Billy Billy K thing though it's either going to be really good or really bad or they're really going to regret breaking up the I cut it uh, it was a ham sandwich match. Then with Rey Mysterio versus Baron Corbin. And there are no more Knights of Corbin. They were absent. Hmm. Gee, because they're bad. Blake and Cutler. Boo. Well, they, they don't get booed like... Boo, Sonya Deville. They don't get that level of boo. They just get and meh. I, I meh to you. Uh, so Rey Mysterio versus Baron Corbin. Uh, Corbin again <laughs> eats a buckle rana to begin with. I like the fact that actually people know how to take buckle bombs, buckle ranas, and buckle exploder suplexes. They do it from a distance. And they're hitting either the middle one or the bottom one, depending who it is. And that just seems so much, I guess it's relatively safer than, than whatever Seth Rollins did. Because you don't hear Baron Corbin says, Oh, my neck. You dropped me on my neck. So, yeah. And Seth is gone for a while. I know Becky had their kids, so I don't know if it's... Like parental leave or what? It's just, no. Seth has to redo, redesign, and, and re-architect himself anyway. Because I'll tell you what, that whole minister thing, never liked it to begin with. 
Uh, let's see here. So, so now, so after that, it gets Corbin upset a little bit. He beats up Ray. Ray hits a big wheelbarrow bulldog. <clears throat> Corbin goes outside, clotheslines. Ray on the outside of the ring begins to talk trash. And Dominic said, yeah, just sit there, little man. Don't cost your daddy the match, little man. There was no 619. It was like a half 619. It was like, I got countered. Or. And not, yeah, that was a deep, that was a deep six, not the end of days. End of days was next. I guess, so the 619 gets countered with, with the deep six. Uh, Corbin then goes out to the ring. He shoves Dominic. Dominic tries to step up. Uh, Ray's, he, he steps in the ring. Ray's like, no, calm down. I, I got things under control. Baron Corbin pushes Ray into Dominic. Dominic goes out of the ring. A distracted Ray eats a big end of days. Baron Corbin gets the win. I do like the way they're doing this. They're trying to drive a wedge between father and son using Baron Corbin, who's probably a very manipulative, the, the manipulative heel. So that makes sense. A solid cheeseburger match. And then let's see there's more Paul Heyman and Adam Pierce, and then we uh, we had Ding Dong Hello. Bailey's good on the mic. Bianca Belair is okay on the mic. This just didn't work for me. I don't know what it was. Maybe there's there's too many. I think primarily with WWE, there's too many talk show segments. On Impact, they've really narrowed that down to select shows. They only have locker room talk with Madison Rain, who I think, if rumors are to believe, is going to be leaving Impact. Because I want to say, kind of guesswork, detective work. Madison Rain's pregnant too. Josh Matthews is taking some time off. Because I know. Supposedly at Heart to Kill, it's going to be Matt Stryker, and I wish Vampiro, but it's, it's not. Um, I, I honestly forget who his partner is going to be. I know it's Matt Stryker. And someone else. Wait, I do forget. It's Matt Stryker and someone else. I heard Matt Stryker, I'm like, oh, please be Vampiro. And it was someone else who was not Vampiro. So, we'll see... Well, at least El Vagabundo will report on that later. So, yeah, I don't know. Then you see Daniel Bryan, uh, Chad Gable, and Otis are doing exercises. Cesaro confronts them. So, yeah, those, yeah, throwing your hips is going to do, throwing your hips is going to do no good when, when you have to fight me next. Uh, let's see. Then there was a little bit more about. Oh, I wish I had a crowd only because if there was a crowd when Jey Uso said, yeah, we don't want to see any more of Oldberg, you know, the whole crowd would have gone Oldberg, Oldberg, that would have been, and they would have taken over his whole promo and he, and he would just say, yeah, that's right. <sighs> Jey Uso, he's a good promo, but Oh my goodness, when a crowd is there, he is so much better though. He feeds off that crowd, not having a crowd, and just having like the MP3 cheers come in. Because you know, crowds can do screwy things. They can, crowds can, and I've seen it, crowds can mess with their heads every so often. Yeah, I want them too. Just ask Goldberg when they started to chant CM Punk. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> or with the McMahon when they're saying, you're never seeing him in this ring again. That was funny. So then we got Daniel Bryan versus Cesaro. This was an amazing match. This is one of those high quality, um, harking, it's, it's, it's a near ring of honor championship match. And the fact that this was a super technical match. And you give me a, Good technical match with action in it. I love it all the way. Starts off uh, very uh, headlock takedown. This is a shoulder tackle. 
the chain wrestling, then Daniel Bryan did the arm drag into the arm bar. Classic stuff. Cesaro is thrown to the corner, gets the big elbow up to Daniel Bryan. Uh, Daniel Bryan then does a drop kick while Cesaro's in the corner, again, countering that. Cesaro's just too strong, again, pound for pound, probably one of the strongest men in the WWE. And they've said that about him multiple times, too. Cesaro was an awesome, awkward monkey flip, like, in the ropes. That looked like pure Ring of Honor. That looks like something they would, like, they just misjudged probably the length of Cesaro and his relation to the ropes. So that's just, like, like, super awkward. But yet... It looked really good. It was one of those, it's it's so awkward, it's like good looking though. You know, monkey flipped into the ropes, they go outside. And then Bryant was going for the yes kicks, however, he kicked the post. Again, the post, that is the hardest part of the ring. It's pure metal. Again, not the apron, the post. The post is the hardest part of the ring. Followed by the turnbuckle bolts. And then maybe the steel steps. And parts of the ramp. And supporting structure of the ring. Well, well yeah. The, the struts of the ring. And then, like, the apron's, like, fifth or sixth. Then I'm sure you have the ring bell, the ring hammer, and all the other peripheral stuff. Tables, chairs, stuff. Fire extinguisher is probably harder. But I digress. Then, uh, what was, where was I now? After my rising right. Yeah, uh, so so he kicked that. Cesaro begins to work over the legs of Daniel Bryant. Uh, Daniel Bryant back in the ring has a spinning yes lock. Uh, Cesaro's too la- too long and lanky. He gets a leg on the rope. Daniel Bryant again. He went for the went for the Cesaro swing uh, into the figure nine sharpshooter scorpion death lock, whatever you want to call it. Went for all three of them. Cut, uh, that eventually got countered to the yes lock. That's actually that's when he got the foot on the rope. Um, then there was the one position. They changed again. Really good spot there. Uh, some yes kicks. Uh, Cesaro did hit the pop up, pop up, pop up European uppercut, and then hit the gosh neutralizer. He pinned Daniel Bryant. I'll tell you what. This is another surf and turf match. And honestly, if they would have let that that match go on oh, five or seven more minutes, it probably would have been a flaming young match. And then we have Kayla, uh, is in backstage with 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 um, a fake boobied Carmella, and Sasha Banks, who looks relatively flat in comparison to Carmella. They're talking. Sasha's gonna fight the um, small yay guy. Uh, that'll be weird. Then we have, let's see, let's see how close to half hour I can get this. Apollo Crews takes on Sami Zayn. And after his little pep talk from Roman Reigns, uh, Crews just goes all out on Sami Zayn. Um, Crews tried for something from the top rope, gets dropped from the top rope. Again, Sami Zayn gets those hits in. Crews hits a big suplex. That was really good. Oh, yeah, Cesaro did an amazing superplex, too, by the way. Cesaro is just freaking amazing. Then, oh yeah, in this match, Biggie is on commentary. He's sitting on a the probably one of the most comfortable loveseat couches, with a mini fridge next to him, and he's there wearing a zip-up Ghostbuster sweater. Oh, Biggie, you sir always get that thumbs up. Never boo Biggie for that. That was an, that looks. It's an ama- it's an amazingly ugly cr- ugly Christmas sweater of Ghostbusters. It's so cool though, so bad it's good. Then let's see here, uh, Cruz and hits a suplex and then Seguri tried it for a standing moonsault, but no, Sammy got his legs up. Sammy Zane tried to grab the trunks in her roll up. Nope, the ref just saw that. He starts arguing with her. Uh, 
Sammy did a corn a corn exploder suplex that was good. Uh, eventually, Apollo Cruz also rolls up Sami Zayn. Apollo Cruz grabs the tights, gets away with it. As long as the ref doesn't see it, it's not illegal. Apollo Cruz wins. Solid cheeseburger match. Uh, Biggie and Apollo Cruz begin. Oh yeah, cheeseburger match. Biggie and Apollo Cruz start yapping back and forth, and then the final part uh, we have the contract signing. Roman Reigns uh, and Adam Pearce signs. And then Adam Pearce reminds him, remember at the bottom of every WWE contact, card subject to change. Oh! So now it's going to be KO versus Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. So that was actually a fairly entertaining... That was... Besides the opening, after you got past the, t the 15 minutes of no wrestling, it was actually a really entertaining show. And that's the way SmackDown's kind of going. As long as they can get past that opening opening bump, it's actually really good. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And maybe you'll see El... Or Ijo Del Hobo El Vagabundo 25 tomorrow.